And this is what the Florence Civic Center is known for, your trade shows, your conferences, things like that. And this is actually where they're gonna actually expand. Bob, I think the overall consensus for folks who living in this area is, oh no, not again. And so far, he hasn't overtaken the Lamar Johnson Bridge. News 13's Nick Sturdivant continues our coverage. Nick. Nicole, a large crowd came out today for the funeral of the pastor and the state senator killed. Again, they want to reiterate there was no hostage situation involving uh, correctional officers. It was quite the scene in Mississippi as a semi truck carrying the animals crashed on the interstate. You got folks here from across the state, community leaders, politicians. As you can see, we're right across the street. Seems a little bit different from earlier this morning. One, it's light outside and two people are showing up, taking pictures. What has changed is that officials have pushed up the orange cones. While roads are starting to open up across the state, what has remained open is this 30 foot gap. Now the stage is set for not only the reopening, but potentially millions of dollars. A high school student in Rhode Island is being told her photo is not allowed in the yearbook. It's a decision that's causing many parents to shake their heads. For many, the removal of the Confederate flag at the state house grounds is a snapshot in history. No matter if you are for. I have Confederate ancestry like a lot of white people and I know what my heritage is and to me it represents racism and white supremacy. Or against it. And that's why I did it. So they would start conversation and dialogue. They would say, was there a black soldier in the Confederate Army? On the canvas of history. He fought for something and he stood for something. While history sits on the canvas of Bernard Jackson's artwork. No one's talking about this guy. You know, we're talking about the Confederate, but what, what about that guy? What about that guy? He probably was never free after the war. A conversation piece nonetheless, as many took pictures of this nameless Union soldier with the Confederate flag as his backdrop. I mean, this is my home. Bernard Jackson is a scenic artist who came back home to Columbia to open a gallery. I heard about what's happening. I said, you know, let me come up here and raise a little cane. <laughs> and so, but for now, uh, setting up shop across from the State House grounds. <laughs> and as the flag was lowered and cheers erupted. South Carolina finally grew up. You know, wow, we joined the rest of the world. There was only one this thing is, left to do. Beautiful. Wow, wow. This, I can sign this piece now. I'm done. Stick a fork in it, I'm done. <laughs> wow. In Columbia, Nick Sturderman. That's it. He's done. News 13. That just was just messed up yesterday and today. For Wanda Pittman. And I just, I just got shook up. I got shook up. I, 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 I ain't over it yet. The I last 24 hours walking. has been anything but easy. I mean, it was just coming and coming and coming and coming. Her life, just like her apartment, flipped upside down. Yes, it is. Yes, it's messed up right now. I have my clothes and stuff hanging in. And my bed and my bed when my box spring it wet up. This is not the first time we've stepped foot inside. Traces of where the water was left behind. While Wanda's things sit on drier land. Yeah, it's just only all these apartments right here. And the rest of them ain't nothing happened to them. I don't know whether it the drains or what. In 2012, Marion County received a five hundred thousand dollar community block grant for a drainage project from the state, one of 28 counties to receive money. And I, I don't think have that project has any impact on the flooding that we experience. It's in a location. According to Marion County Administrator Tim Harper, the grant was used to fix the drainage system in Southwest Mullins, away from where many were affected Wednesday. It's more a uh, result of the ditches and streams and creeks. That City Administrator David Husbeth noting that with it being full, essentially there is nowhere for the water to go. I, there ain't nothing I can do right now but just try to get some of this water up off the floor. While the last 24 hours oh, have been rough. Oh, Lord Jesus. Wanda would rather put her faith in the next 24 hours. Yeah, he's going to help me. Odds are you've been to enough basketball games to recognize everyone involved, from the mascot to the players and even the cheer section. And if you attended a Southside Middle School basketball game lately, 
Odds are you've seen the cheer team's newest members. Victory! Let's take it. And they've always asked, can I cheer with you guys? For coach Kimberly Matthews Robinson, fellow coach Charnique Barely, and teacher Miriam Fulger. And just sit back and watch the sparkles just happen. And that's why, you know, we're called the Falcon Sparkles. This has been three years in the making. Five, six, seven, eight. And you want to Let's give them an opportunity Falcons to truly connect with yeah. your typically developing teams. Yeah. This is the first year Southside Middle has been a part of the Sparkle Effect, an initiative to connect students with and without disabilities through cheer. And I said, oh my gosh, this is perfect for our, for our school. 23% of our students at Southside are special needs students. Um, so they're a very important part of our, our school culture. They act as like they've known you for like the longest time, but they've really only known you for a month or so. They can interact, they can hug because the children and the kids, they embrace them. And in only their second halftime performance this year, they prepare to take the court. Not only the talk of the school, but the talk of town. And that's really one of our goals is just to real for them to realize that we're all the same. You did a good job, huh? In Florence, Nick Sturdivant, News 13. Well, today was out of ordinary. No one would have imagined that their Wednesday morning alarm clock would be this. Three, three shots, two, three, three shots. Pow, pow, pow. Three shots near this bus stop at the corner of Carver Circle and West Sumter Street in Florence. I peeped down there and I seen all the police is turning and so I called someone they told me what was going on. Hey Thomas back. Burgess was inside her home across the street when she heard the shots and the swarm of deputies surrounding the bus stop. It was scary because knowing that the kids be at the bus stop and I started shriveling and I lost my breath. I was living here all my life. I'm 52 years old. So we was living on our corner all these years and we didn't have none of this drama like that. But while Wednesday was out of the ordinary, Faye Thomas says recently the neighborhood has been marred by two shootings in the last two weeks. My girlfriend called me and said that her grandson didn't want to go to school because somebody was threatening them at the bus stop. Florence School District 1 says upon finding out what happened, the Beck Child Development Campus nearby was immediately secured and locked down. So the only thing hard to imagine is the sense of security this community feels. We need more police patrol or something because this is getting ridiculous. In Florence, Nick Sertivant, News 13.